Uh, welcome back to another one. What's the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? One of them you'll see later, and the other one you'll see in a while. Uh, if you didn't get that joke, you're probably not Australian, uh, or you just don't know how to make things rhyme. So let's take a look at today's topic. It's going to be a big concept. Uh, I've tried my best to uh, to break it down as best as I can, um, but you're going to need a lot of practice with this, okay? HSC-wise, this is going to be your band six type questions in advance. Um, so good practice, but I'm going to break it down into in, its simple form today. Okay, we call this maximization and minimization. Um, sometimes some people call it optimization problems. And essentially, it's a practical application for finding um, min or max stationary points, Okay. So it's going to feel like stationary points, um, but it's, yeah. Uh, a, a simple example that shows this is they'll say, okay, find a maximum rectangular area given that you have 12 meters of fencing. Okay, so really quickly what I've drawn out here, and this is not the mathematical way to do it. This is just a, mm, like, I don't know, guess and check slash problem solving way. You can see that all of these rectangles here will have a perimeter of 12 meters but they're all gonna give different areas. For example, that's five meters squared because one by five, two by four is eight meters squared, nine meters squared, so on and so forth. And so you can see that there's one particular one that gives you a maximum area, okay? Um, and so it's kind of weird, but we get this idea of, we start with, everyone has 12 meters of fencing, but there's a way that you can do it where you can maximize an area. Um, and similarly, there's also a way that you can do it where you would minimize. Okay, so that's the idea, um, but let's kind of break it down mathematically. Now, in terms of this, there's also usually these questions come in the form of they'll talk about a specific length and then they'll talk about area, or they'll talk about area and volume, or they'll talk about time and quantity, money and quantity, speed and distance. Uh, there's lots of different ways that these questions come out. And so there's no one way but there are a couple kind of ground rules, which I'm hoping to talk about. Okay, now max and min questions, they usually consist of there's two main parts in these questions. Okay, now I uh, generally think the first part is a little bit more difficult. Um, and then the second part will feel a little bit more simple, but long story short, let me put it to you this way. The first part is you've got to form the equations. Okay, so what I mean by that is you may need to draw a diagram or label, and generally it's you're forming two equations that usually have two unknowns. I like to use X and Y or whatever the question gives. There it is. And then if you've got two equations with two unknowns, that's when you kind of, it feels like you're dealing with some sort of simultaneous kind of question. Um, and you kind of rewrite it until you're working with one variable. So the first part I think is very, very similar. It feels like you're forming two simultaneous equations. The second part, is you're gonna find um, min or max values. So once you've got the equation, it's gonna feel a lot like find the stationary point, determine nature. And then the last part is making sure you answer exactly what the question wants. Okay, now to break this down, we're gonna try actually doing this. So we're gonna try forming the equation and then we're gonna try finding the min max values. And I'm gonna do it with that very simple question that we had before. Okay, farmer has 12 meters of fencing and wants to create a rectangular garden bed that maximizes the area. Find the dimensions of the garden bed that give the maximum area. Okay, so a couple things here. Whenever you see minimum or maximum, that's kind of your hint that we're working with a optimization question. Okay, now in terms of what is given, uh, let's see what we've got. We've got 12 meters of fencing and we've, we want to create a rectangular garden bed, and it's talking about a uh, area. So let's quickly draw. Okay, for this first part forming the equation, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw some sort of rectangle, okay? Now I know it needs to be, I don't know, two different lengths that I don't know, and they haven't asked me to, to bring in X and Y, but I'm gonna bring in X and Y. Okay, now using this, I know that if I'm talking about area, I'm trying to find max area, it should be x multiplied by y base times height. Now, unfortunately, that's not very helpful right now because I don't know, there's just x's and y's. 
But they've given us one more piece of information and that's the 12 meters of fencing. Okay, now that essentially is talking about the perimeter. Okay, so the perimeter, we've got a 12 meter perimeter and it's going to be by, uh, the way that perimeter works is if I look at these four sides, it should be two X plus two Y. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you take a look here, and I'm just gonna get rid of that P so it looks a bit cleaner. Um, I've got two equations and I've got two unknowns. So how do I deal with two equations, two unknowns? Let's go simultaneous. So again, uh, with this number one here, I'm gonna see if I can get Y on its own for this one, rearrange for Y. So I can see that 12 minus two X is gonna to equal to two Y. And then if I divide everything through by two, I can see that y is going to equal to six take away x. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Okay, now the reason I've made y is now, if I highlight this, I can see that that y can be replaced with this y there. And so now rewriting this, I can now have an expression for my area that says it's supposed to be x times y. But instead of y, I'm going to write as x minus or x times six minus x. So if I really wanted to, expanding it, it'll give me six X take away X squared. Okay, that there becomes my, uh, my equation. Okay, and I did that by doing something that was a little bit simultaneous. Now that I've got this, okay, now I'm up to this, all of this was part one. Part two is now, let's treat it like a maximization or minimization question. I'm gonna find the stationary points and I'm going to determine their nature. Okay, so for stationary points, I'm gonna let a dash equal to zero. So a dash, let's derive, it becomes six take away two X, let it equal to zero. So zero equals to six take away two X, and then solving here, two X equals to six, and I can see here that X will equal to three. Okay, now while I'm at it, uh, I also know, I wanna find what my Y value is, and I can plug it into my original, which is for me right there. Okay, y equals to six take away x. So six take away three, which equals to three. So essentially uh, stationary point is going to be x equals three, y equals three. Okay, now the second part is uh, I also need to determine nature. And how do we determine nature? Well, the easiest way is to use your second derivative. Okay, so to use your second derivative, let's do a double dash. Now I know that a, I don't know if you can see here, a dash is six take away two X. So deriving it one more time, a double dash just becomes minus two. And what's nice about this is it is a constant. That means even whatever value of X doesn't really matter, it's always going to be negative two. So therefore, Concavity for second derivative means concave down, which means it's going to be a max value, which if you remember in the question, we're trying to find when it was a max. So that's going to be my max stationary point. Okay, so I found my stationary point. Sometimes there's points, in this case, it's just a point. I've determined its nature. I've essentially done most of the question. The last part is just make sure and again, I'm going off these things. I drew my diagram, I formed two equations, I did simultaneous. I found my stationary point, I determined its nature. The last step here is probably the most important. Make sure you answer the actual question. So I'm gonna look at the question here. It says, the question wants me to find the dimensions that give the maximum area. So it's just asking for the dimensions. So the dimensions, and again, from our diagram before, we said that dimensions were X and Y. And you can see here that X and Y in this particular case is three and three. So that means three by three is the dimensions that's gonna give me my maximum area equals dimensions. So essentially a square gives my maximum area. And then if they asked for find the max area, you'd say it's nine meters squared okay uh, i'll leave it there practice this process okay the questions are going to get more difficult i've picked probably the easiest example you could give but i wanted to break down the process okay
So if, if you learn anything, this is what I want you guys to remember. Practice this process. Every question is kind of grounded in this. Okay. Awesome. Appreciate you guys. And I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.